Well, I truly hope everyone's uh, doing well in these these crazy uncertain times uh, for sure. So um, a little bit about me. So uh, so my name is Steve Holly. I'm here in Denver, Colorado. Um, for years, I actually, um, I ran a commercial music program at a school here in Denver, Colorado. I did that for about 20 years. And um, it was unlike most ordinary band programs insofar as we don't, we didn't have a marching band. We didn't have a, uh, an orchestra. We didn't have a pet band or a concert band. Uh, we did have salsa bands, R&B bands, soul bands, jazz bands. Uh, we did, the students did about 30 to 40 gigs a year. Uh, we had standing gigs at clubs around town. Uh, they basically played anywhere you might see a professional band play. Um, that might be, um, uh, a club, a bar, a bar mitzvah, a wedding, uh, you name it. And in addition, they also, we did some uh, touring throughout the country. Um, we did some things and uh, uh, we would take trips every year to New York, Memphis, New Orleans, uh, LA, Miami, uh, just to learn more about the musical culture of that city. Um, and before, so before that, uh, I was actually a full-time musician and did all my undergrad and graduate studies uh, at the University of Memphis. Uh, so I was a, a full time Memphis musician back then. And just a couple of years ago, I decided to um, step back from my position uh, at my school and resigned. Um, and it always kind of thought in the back of my head about the possibility of going back, and getting my doctorate. So I'm actually just finishing up my first year in the Ph.D. program in music education at Arizona State University. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of a it's it, it's it's busy for sure. Uh, not to mention that I'm homeschooling two boys upstairs. My wife's office is right above me as well. Mr. Bob, how you doing, friend? Good to hear from you, man. Hope you all are doing well. So uh, what this is, what this kind of came from was um, when this kind of all went down a couple of Fridays ago, um, I reached out to to Elisa and said, hey, how, how, how can I help? What, what can I do? And she said, well, what, what would you do in this situation? And I had to kind of get back in that, that in, into that gear because I, I, I didn't have a band at that point. I was back into being a student. I'm teaching classes, um, but I'm teaching intro to music education, things like that. I'm not doing uh, ensemble courses. So I had to kind of think about it for a bit. And so um, what I did was uh, I actually um, I obviously joined up with with Elisa's page and kind of just, you know, helped as much as I could there, answer some questions, try to use a little bit of my experience there to help folks out. And one day what I did was um, I posted my friend, Michael Parsons. Michael teaches at a school in Memphis. And he posted uh, this video that you see down here that just, you know, got a ton of hits. And so I thought about, you know, is there an easy, um, efficient way to do this or something similar? So, and obviously this has been a big conversation for now about how can we do, um, you know, the, the live online, the live online rehearsal, how can we do the live performance? How can we do one of those great videos with all 120 of my kids, uh, on at once? And the answer really is you can't, um, you can't, unless you want to spend an inordinate amount of hours in terms of a live rehearsal technology is, it just isn't there yet in terms of the video you can do it, but it takes quite a bit of time. So as I said, so live synchronous at the same time rehearsal performance isn't possible. So the way that I'm kind of thinking about this is how do we use this time to one, just kind of triage and figure out what can we do right now uh, to support and engage and interact with our students and, you know, and, and sustain that community, help them develop skills and just make sure they're okay. Check in with them. But, um, that said, how can we how can we reframe this? What's the residue that will that will continue on into the fall? Um, what is this going to mean for student engagement uh, in terms of music? Is this going is this the paradigm shift that we've been talking about the past few years? Or once the fall hits, are we just going to uh, basically all close up our laptops and stay as far away from technology as possible? I, I don't know. But with this right now, we're kind of in triage mode. So the idea is how can you get your students together now? And how can you do it easily and efficiently while you have kids running above you like I do? Um, so anyway, there you have it. So the idea is um, what, what, what can we do in the now? So really, if you think about it, why should we 
even bother doing this? You know, why why bother giving our kids uh, doing doing this with our students? Well, a couple things. Um, what what's the, edu the educational value of this? Is it develops critical listening skills, being in the recording studio. Um, for me. Uh, obviously, being a, a, a Memphis musician, I learned so much when I was in when I was in town. Um, I was playing literally sometimes doubles and triples every single day, jazz gigs, orchestra gigs, um, pop gigs, blues, just you you name it. Because I'm, I'm I'm a bass player, so I was able to play so much. Um, so how do you develop those? Back up real quick. So I played tons and tons and tons. Did a little bit of recording, but not a lot. Then when I moved to Denver, um, I started working with a buddy of mine who's a producer and an engineer and started getting in, getting into the recording studio. And I was able to go back and listen to what I had been playing and things that I thought was sounded really cool. Um, in hindsight, I was like, huh, yeah, I, I, I probably don't want to do that again. And I would also get um, interaction and review and feedback from friends or producers. Um, Building community. This is the way that we can continue to build community and have our students continue to make music together. And we can engage students in that community through music. And once again, it allows that self-evaluation. Just going back and listening to yourself and going, ooh, that didn't sound as good as I thought it would going by. Um, and also peer evaluations for our friends uh, to, list, to listen to us, for the students to listen to each other and figure out um, how, they can better, how they can better themselves. So <laughs> dealing with everything in this crazy uncertain time we are now, we're in now, um, you know, having to jump into technology, having to deal with um, having to homeschool our kids and be a parent or maybe take care of a, a, of a parent or um, a loved one. Um, the emotional and the mental, our emotional mental health, the strain on our emotional mental health right now is crazy. So I'm trying to find ways in this time of general uncertainty to be as efficient as I possibly can. So that's kind of the idea here with this is how can we engage our kids, but not spend hours on end in the basement um, editing audio and video files while my family needs me upstairs. So that's kind of the idea there. So we're going to take a look at scaffolding the learning process. We're going to begin with uh, what's hopefully with the, with the easiest iteration of doing this. And to be completely honest, uh, in full disclosure, um, once I did the first iteration, I discovered that, oh, there's an actually easier iteration, which we may kind of come back to. Um, but we'll talk about that momentarily. So we want to build from there to include additional steps, um, additional editing steps, additional um, how do we how do we edit audio? How do we add effects? How do we do things to make the audio sound sound better? And in the end, um, through offering our students these engagements, uh, give them an opportunity to be involved and create a project that they can look back on and listen to for years. So, um, and as I mentioned earlier, with the audio and video editing, um, I, there's been a lot of discussion about you know how can I do the Eric Whitaker thing? Well. <laughs> Unless you're going to do a GoFundMe for $122,000, um, you're, you're not. So um, unless you're a professional audio editor and you have Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro or Pro, or Pro Tool Studio in your basement, um, you can't. That's, that's not, to me, that's not the easy and efficient way. So I'll just, once again, full disclosure, put that out right at the beginning because you don't want to end up, um, you don't want to end up like this little dude and just kind of completely frustrated in front of your computer. So... The recording process. When I thought about this, I was thinking, okay, what do teachers need? How can we do this with teachers and students to make it as easy as possible? Well, the first thing I did was I thought, okay, students and teachers can only use what they have on hand, which means they can only have their device. They can have, say, a tablet, a laptop. Um, if they have access to the internet, that, and then online DAWs. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, that said, Quick side note, I understand that a lot of the discussion right now is about what can we do for our students who don't have who don't have internet access. And truly, my my heart goes out to them. I I certainly have some ideas on that. And I and I've I've answered a few of those um, those posts on Facebook. Um, so but this video, knowing that that's an issue, there are other other things that we can do for those students to engage them and to help them out. Um, that said, this is not uh, what we're doing here. This isn't necessarily 
um, going, going to help those students right now. It may very well in the future, especially if we pivot the way that we engage our kids and those students that don't have internet access now or device access, maybe we can somehow build our infrastructure and those students do have that access uh, come the fall when they get back to school. So some things to think about. The other thing was uh, no outboard gear. So we didn't have any like, you know, fancy dancy microphones, uh, no outboard gear, no Scarlet preamps, uh, no Pro Tools, no Logic, no Final Cut Pro, no nothing like that. The idea was only what you have, uh, what most folks will have on hand, all right? Uh, the musicians, they listen to a guide track. Um, a lot of people are trying to use click tracks and that's great. If you're a competent studio musician and you spent years um, listening to click tracks and playing to click tracks and you're comfortable with that, that's a great way of doing it. My guess is probably 99% of secondary students are only comfortable playing to a click track um, if they're doing scales. I'm just gonna put that out there. Maybe I'm way off base, uh, but I think it's gonna be a lot easier for me if they're listening to a guide track. And what I mean by that, you could create an accompaniment say on GarageBand or Finale or Sibelius, or you could track it if you have a keyboard at home. Um, or you could just let them listen to the original uh, studio recording. So we decided that we were going to do, um, the first group that I put together, we we're gonna do Stevie Wonder's I Wish. So what I did was I had them all uh, listen through earbuds, uh, listen to I Wish. Um, so they are all of a sudden, they had time. So there's the click track. They have song form, so they don't, me they don't mess up the song form. They have also kind of a vibe and a groove because uh, they're, they're listening and they're listening to, to what's going on. They're playing playing with, with, uh, with other individuals. They're playing with the original artist. They're playing with Stevie, for goodness sakes. Um, and it also works on rhythm, intonation, uh, all that stuff. So to me, having them listen to a click, uh, sorry, a, a guide track, the same guide track. Um, is what you want to do. You don't want them have. You don't want them listening to say one on Spotify, the studio version from Songs of the Key of Life, and then one listens to the Stevie Wonder live here, and one listens to the uh, some cover band doing Stevie Wonder. You want them to listen to the exact same one with the exact same time. So, and that's that's something that students have to learn. Typically, uh, I grew up a trumpet player, so I don't remember a single solitary time playing along with a uh, with a recording unless it was say in jazz band, but concert band, marching band, it just wasn't done. So, but being, um, I picked up the bass after high school and I immediately picked up the bass, turned on the radio and started playing the radio. And that's what popping musicians and jazz musicians, that's kind of what we do. So we're a little more adept at that. So this might give our kids who don't have that background, um, start playing along with these recordings to develop their time. Um, and then at that point, the musicians, they all uploaded their audio and their video to the cloud. I didn't specify Dropbox versus iCloud versus Google. I said, just send it to me how, what's ever easiest for you. And I'll figure it out, figure it out on my end. You individually, you might want to create a class Dropbox or, um, Google drive or something like that. It also depends on the stipulations, uh, of, of your school district, of course. And then finally, what I did was I pulled all those files down uh, from the cloud, put them onto my laptop and dropped them into a DAW. All right. So a DA, uh, DA, what the heck is a DAW? The first time I was having a conversation with someone and they kept saying, yeah, the DAW and yeah, we're going to and then the DAW and then the, what are you talking about? And um, only then did I realize that, oh, it's a digital audio workstation. Okay, I got that. What a digital audio workstation is, it's, it's effectively um, a mixer that is online. You can access it online. And there are several out there. There are more than I know what to do with. Um, the one we're going to be working with right now is Soundtrap. But there's also, um, I think, Soundation is one. BandLab is one. If you have a Mac, GarageBand is what you have on your computer. Um, if you have a uh, if you have a device, a lot of people are talking about acapella um, and the pros and cons of that. Um, I just recently learned about there's um, uh, there's a piece of hardware I've known about it for a while called Spire S P I R E, um, and they have an app for it. But I didn't know that. I thought you had to have the hardware to record into it, but you don't. You can actually record and collaborate directly on the Spire app. So that may be one that 
I might pivot this and do something in that. So we'll kind of check that out. But the reason we're going with Soundtrap right now is it's free. So that's that's the biggest reason. It's free. Um, two, it's collaborative. That's something that's really cool that we'll talk about. And that's hopefully one of the things that we're going to kind of figure out. Yeah, Mike, Audacity is, is certainly another one. Once again, there's so many. We, we could spend an entire webinar talking about all the different ones that are out there. Um, and there are tons of resources and lists that list those, no doubt. Um, and the good thing is that most of these, they're also super easy to use. Once you understand one, um, if you understand GarageBand, moving to Soundtrap, isn't that hard for me? Um, once again, full disclosure, I'm, I'm proficient in pro tools. So I'm very comfortable on pro tools. Um, going into Soundtrap was a little different for me at first because it's a, um, just for several reasons, which we'll get into some things that I, I wanted to be able to do. I wasn't able to do, and that's okay. It's, it's free. So I'm okay with that. Um, another great thing about Soundtrap is, uh, it includes tutorials tons and tons and tons of tutorials. So it tells you exactly how to do things. And uh, once again, I should, I should also say, I'm not a, a Soundtrap rep. I'm not paid or endorsed by them or receiving you know, anything from them. I just looked online and said, okay, what can I use? And I decided to use this. So here's the other thing is that I'm gonna be making mistakes through this simply because I opened up Soundtrap for the first time on Saturday morning. So I'm not coming at this speaking as an expert saying, here's how you go about doing it. It's more, um, hey, here are the mistakes that I made and here's um, how I found a workaround and here are the walls that I hit and I just don't know how to do it. So um, that's another thing is having this being kind of a learning community. So people have some ideas about some other shortcuts. Oof, please, please let me know. So, some of the things about overcoming issues. Um, let's let's actually let's do this. There is a poll. I'll go ahead. I'll make live right now. So let's do this. This should pop up somewhere on your screen. So what is your experience level um, engaging with uh, with online audio? Let, let's just stick with audio editing. Let's go with audio editing first. Okay. Um, video editing is a whole nother animal. So let's not go there. Thanks, Michelle. I'm just, we're all in this together. All right, so it looks like a, a good majority of us have, have some idea. Okay, good. Some of us are a total noob and that's great. Um, no pros in the room. So no one can call me out when I make a mistake. I'm I, I'm I'm all right with that. And uh, some people have lots. Perfect. Um, once again, if I'm speaking, being in a professional recording studio, I have a pretty good amount of experience. If I'm speaking of being the uh, an engineer in a home studio, not not a lot. So I'm probably around some, to be completely honest. So, um, so the idea, what we'll do here is, and then once again, th thank you all for answering that. I really appreciate that. Also gives me an idea of where we should go. Um, so overcoming issues, hey, I, I don't know what I'm doing. How do I do this? The great thing is that if you do have the online access, um, there are tons and tons and tons of resources and videos and how to's and tutorials all over the place, which can, which can certainly help you out. And if you can't figure out where those are or where to start, um, there are tons of Twitter chats and folks on Twitter and Facebook, um, or hey, you can maybe even like use the phone and call someone who knows. Um, seems like uh, Elizabeth has a spouse who has uh, answers, knows these questions. So, hey, let's all call Elizabeth. Let's ask Elizabeth's husband how to do all this. Um, but some of the issues, how do you sync audio? Typically when we're in a band and we come up and we come down with our conducting, there's the downbeat. Well, how do you do that when you have five, 10, 20 musicians who are all recording at different areas at different times? How do you take those audio clips and sync them up? So we're gonna talk about um, some tricks there. Uh, time, we talked about overcoming issues with the time. Um, is it operator error? Is the, is the student just not playing along with the track? They just, do they just not have good time? Um, you know, that's, you have to deal with that because the less work 
the more work the student does on the front end mm -hmm. to deliver a good prod, a good sounding in time, in tune audio track, um, the less time you'll need to spend editing. And to give you an idea for this first iter iteration, I use some professional musicians and I actually sent it back to two folks and I said, hey, this is this is a little behind. This is a little forward. Hey, could you play this an octave down? Um, so there was some of that interaction back and forth for sure. But I just kind of left it up to them and said, hey, here are the instructions. Let me know. Once again, we talk about intonation. How can you do that? Um, one, you know, there are several things you can obviously have your student. Do you have a tuner on hand? If they go, no, go wait, but you're recording yourself on your device. So just download a tuning app. You'll be fine. Um, there is that. Uh, you can also, if you need to and or want to, uh, you can use a dreaded auto tune. Auto tune is on Soundtrap. It's everywhere. Um, I don't like using it, but I have. I'll, just, I'll say that much. Uh, it just doesn't sound good. Hmm. Um, there are some instruments which just don't translate very well. I was shocked when I got these audio tracks and how, how not only decent, how some of them sounded good. They sounded really good. Um, what I did was I, the one that I've had the most trouble with, um, uh, speaking of Bob, it was the bass. So I actually tracked the bass right here in my, in, in my basement and I used my phone and I put this thing everywhere I possibly could um, next to the speaker, bouncing off the wall. And I just, uh, it, it was so hard getting those nice low notes. It just sounded really thin. So I did have to do some things in the in the DAW to fix it. And then finally, hey, my computer's too slow. How do I make it faster? Um, one thing you want to do is if you haven't, the best thing is when in doubt, hard start. Just turn your computer off and turn it back on like a complete start. Um, shut down everything. Um, and that will certainly help issues um, uh, there. And then obviously there are lots of uh, there are lots of um, things on resources, resources online. How to make your Mac faster in five steps. How to improve the performance of your Windows 10. The other thing you can do is uh, dump your cache especially if you're dealing with an online DAW, dump your history and dump the cache on whatever browser you're using. Don't have a, a dozen or two dozen or more tabs open. So try and close up everything as you possibly can. Um, so those are a few things. Um, Elizabeth just mentioned that what about some balance issues with the different levels of the source recording? So one thing you wanna do is um, I had my students, um, basically all that they did was on their phones, they just pulled up the camera app and they record it straight from there. Um, if you're using just audio, uh, you can't obviously there, you do have a meter and you can check the audio, but what I would ha have them do is to is ask them to check it. Hey, does it sound good? Does it sound distorted? Does it sound okay? Is it in time? Are you in tune? If not, um, don't bother sending it to me yet. Make sure you're sending in a good, a good product. Um, and then what you can do there if you get just get a really hot tenor track, say tenor saxophone track, but it's not distorted, but your berry track is really kind of light, um, you can use faders and audio audio correction, and you can bring up different levels. You'll see um, when I open this up here in a moment. Let me see if I want to do that now, actually. Oh, yeah, I do. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and jump into show you all what I've what I was doing here. So let's go. Yeah, let's go to the final. Just kind of see the, the final. OK, so what I did was I just asked them just for this, um, just to go ahead and send in uh, the first, the intro, the verse and the chorus of Stevie Wonder's I Wish. One thing I will mention is this is going to sound exponentially better uh, if you have earbuds or if you have um, uh, a, a Bluetooth speaker or something like that. It's probably not going to sound great on your computer speakers um, unless you have killer computer speakers, which I don't. But um, just to give you an idea of what it sounds like here, I'll just kind of, um, actually, I'll just do this. I'll just go from the beginning, kind of give you an idea. So I'm going to bring, this, this is your playhead. So this is the whole interface. We'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, but basically what we'll do is I'm just going to line this up right here and I'll hit my, I'll, I'll hit either play down here or I'll just, or I'll just hit my space bar.
Hmm. So there you go. So that's what that's what that sounds like. Um, let me go back to slides. So I can do this. Do, 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 do. Give me a moment. Just having a couple of little technical difficulties. My apologies. So, all right, much better. So let me turn on the chat and see. Not hearing my computer audio. Computer audio uh, setting in Zoom. Hey, that's always good to know. So that is a good question. The only issue is I am not in Zoom. So Daphne, do you have an idea about how I can share? Um, how can share laptop audio as well? I'm not 100% sure, but I think if you didn't have your headphones in for a second, they'd be able to hear it. Oh, well, hey, let's try that. Let's let's give let's give that a moment. See, see, see if that'll work. Because then obviously my, my mic will be on, so that might work. Let's give it a try. I'll play the first part of it and we'll see what happens. Um, hey, thanks, thanks y'all for being flexible. This is all part of it. So that said, as you're getting into Soundtrap, one thing you can do, you can kind of scroll back and forth. This is a scroll bar down here where you can kind of go all back and forth. So let's do this. I'm going to unplug my headphones. We'll see what happens. I can't see the screen now. Yeah, this, this is, uh, that's but okay, mic in the laptop, perfect. So let me do this. Let me actually, since I don't want to come out of the laptop, I'm going to actually turn it on here and have the sound come through my microphone. Hopefully that will make it sound a lot better. So this is uh, once once more with uh, once more with talent. And yeah, Kevin, I'll definitely put it back on the, uh, the screen share and we'll kind of see what happens there. So give me just a moment. We'll figure all the stuff out momentarily. Hey, thank you all for hanging. Thank you all for hanging with me. I appreciate it. Dig it a bit. Dig it a bit. All right, let's see how this works. Let me do a quick test again and see how that works. Yeah, truly real life learning experiences. That's <laughs> like I said, we're all in triage mode. We're all just kind of everything's on fire around us. Um, so, you know, once again, so an idea of what I did, let me see. Uh, speaking of videos, let's see if this kind of comes up. So um, what I did was I reached out initially to some of my former students. All right. That's the first thing I did. Let me actually put my earbuds back in for a moment so we don't get any feedback. So the first thing I did was um, I reached out to some of my former students who um, are playing now. Um, oddly enough, most of them are in, in L.A. right now. Um, uh, a couple of them are, are just, you know, are are club musicians here in Boulder and in Colorado. Um, and then some of them are a couple of them are playing in like the highest echelons uh, with touring artists you you all know. I'll just say that much. You've you've seen them at TV, Coachella, you name it. So um, the first one is this is Perrin. So this is um, she was my vocalist for years. Um, uh, so let me kind of pull pull this up and see if you all can see this. Okay, let me know in the chat if you can't if you're having trouble. I'm um, hearing or seeing this, please. Thank you all so much.
Looking back on when I was a little nappy headed boy. Then my only worry was for Christmas. Then what my would be only my toy? worry was for Christmas. What would be my toy? Even though we sometimes would not get a thing, we, we were happy with the joy the day would bring. Joy no, sneaking we out the back door, hang out with those hoodlum friends of mine. Who are? Greeted at the back door. Boy, I thought I told you, don't Greeted you go outside. Boy, I thought I told you, don't you go outside. Try your best to bring the water to your eyes. Thinking it might stop it. Whooping you behind. I wish those days could come back once more. Why did those days end? But I'm too good. I wish those days. All right, so I hope that kind of figured it out a little bit. Um, let me go back to so many things going on. There we go. Um, yeah, a couple of you mentioned some echo. I, I'm not sure what that's what that's going on because I didn't add any reverb or anything. That was her just singing directly into her microphone uh, or directly into her phone, rather. So I'm not sure what that was coming from. Uh, there was probably a little bit of bleed uh, from her, her from her earbud. I could only hear a little bit, um, but no, there, there should not have been any echo. That's probably just an artifact um, of doing the video conference. That's that's my guess. So hopefully Megan and Don, hopefully that, that answers your, your that hopefully that answers your question. Um, so that's how one of the vocalists would go about doing it. Um, quick side note, um, if Perrin looks or sounds familiar, um, it's probably because she was on she's on American Idol right now. She's actually in the top 40. Um, she just graduated from from college in L.A. and is is living the dream singing professionally in L.A. So, hey, check her out and support her. Um, at first, there was no echo. Later started happening. That's a good one, Joe. I don't know. I'm going to have to take a look at that, figure out what's going on. We'll we'll definitely figure it all out. So then with my with the guitar player. So let's check that out. Kind of what that sounded like coming in. Hopefully there won't be echo. Tell you what, I'm going to leave my mic off for the first bit. Let me know if you hear or don't hear echo. And then I'll turn my mic on and let me know if you hear or don't hear echo. That might be where the feedback loop is coming from. So once again, I'll, overcoming issues. This is part of it. <laughs> all right. So let, let, let me know what you all hear. Honestly, sorry. I could I could sit there and listen listen to him play all day long. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So uh, so some of you said there was echo. Some of you said there wasn't. So I, I hmm, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what what the thing is there. We'll take a look and see maybe what's going on. But I can assure you that what they sent in. Um, I know with Jamie, he probably had a little bit of reverb because he's a guitar player and that's how they roll. Uh, put a little bit of reverb on there when he sent it in. Uh, <laughs> And then, uh, but with Perrin, it was it was dry, meaning there was no reverb, no effects, uh, no nothing. So anyway, so that's that's kind of the idea there. Yeah, I'm sorry if it sounded kind of like a um, like uh, being in a uh, in, in a fish tank. 
So my apologies for that. Like I said, we'll kind of take a look at that. So let's get into the basics of how some of the ways that you, you sync this stuff up. Um, I should mention that we're going to do another one of these on Friday. And what we'll do, kind of the little bit we get into now, uh, we'll, we'll keep going with that on Friday. Today is really, we talk a lot about the how to do things. And I think a lot of times we don't talk about, well, why do we do things? Why should we engage our students this way? Why should we give them opportunities to um, uh, interact in, in a recording studio environment? So today was more about the why, and from here on out and going into Friday at the same time, uh, two o'clock mountain time, uh, we'll get a little more into the how we go about doing this. But that said, um, let's go ahead and let's just dig into it now. So let's go into, let's go into this first one. All right. So the first thing I did here, what I have is I just have the drum track. All right. And actually, let me, um, we're, we're going to do the, I think I just figured out what the problem was with the echo. I think it might've been me anyway. Uh, so let's kind of figure out what's going on. So all that I did was, So all that I did there was I just laid, I laid in the drum audio track. So if we take a look, basically what I did, if we go into here. So originally, as I mentioned, the students, they all sent me their, they all sent me uh, their videos. All right. Because I just thought that would be the easiest way to do it. Then what I did uh, very quickly, let's actually take here. Let's, let's take, let's take, uh, let's take Corbin Jones. All right. So what I did with the well, with the Barry player is basically if you go if if your students do send you a, a video file from their phone, from their camera, it's super easy to convert. Um, if you have a Mac, all you have to do is go into file export as audio only. And it happens about. Let me go. Um, I wish. Barry example. They convert it that quickly. So if you have a Mac, it's super quick. My guess is you, um, if you don't have a Mac or you don't have QuickTime Play or something, there are multiple online converters where you can drop this in and then turn a .mov file into um, a .mov file into a uh, um, into a an MP3. PCs, yeah. So Elizabeth, that that would be what's going on there. Um, well, it's not. So, yeah. So basically what I'm doing is I'm extracting an, an audio file. And then when I go over the audio, you can see that they're all M4As. So they're not MP3s because they're not that compressed. And then all I do. So let's do this. Let's take that guitar track from that, that, had, that I had earlier. Um, guitar chords. I can do one of two things. I can either just drop it in like this or you do it the slightly cleaner way. What I can do is I can go into add track, import file, where did I put that, where did I put that? Guitar chords. And what it does is it drops it right in. And then what you can do, if you want to move things around, you can grab each of these and move them around. So what I want to do now is what my um, what my uh, drummer did at the beginning was use his hi-hat to give me clicks on one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then my guitar player, he actually, because he's, he's a great player, um, did chunks on, on, on one, two, three, four. So what I did is I brought my player head back and I kind of, and then I used, I zoomed in using this down here and I kind of got an idea for where they are. So let me do this. Let me do this really quickly. Let me actually just listen to the drums and find out where that downbeat is. Okay. All 
All right, so my downbeat is pretty much gonna be right here on the downbeat of, of measure six. That's, and if you open up, these are called waveforms. If you make this a little bit bigger, you can actually see what they would really look like. Um, so that is going to be, this is gonna be my downbeat right there. So what I'm gonna do is, let me take a look now to here. Let me back out just a little bit so I can see more what's going on. So he actually comes in a little bit, a little bit behind. Hey, Benjamin, not right now, buddy. <laughs> so, so what I'm going to need to do is take this. Hey, Benjamin Noah, Benjamin, because I'm live on the internet with a bunch of people all over the world. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. We can learn tunes later. Okay. See you, bud. Sad face emoji. <laughs> Um, yeah, Larry, sorry about that. I actually, I realized as soon as I was dragging and dropping files that, that you, you, you couldn't see my folder. Basically all that I was doing was going into, if you go into QuickTime, uh, open up the file, go to file, export as audio only, it will give you the M4A file. So it's, it's, it's ridiculously easy. It was, it was much easier than I, than I thought it was going to be basically. So, uh, now that I have my 10 year old out of here. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, so I need to move that back. That's actually not the downbeat. So you kind of see how it's kind of all, it's kind of all over the place. So what you can do is you can just grab this one and you can move it left and right and, 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 and until it syncs up. So I think actually if I look at it a little closer. Now that I'm all flustered that my 10 year my 10 year old was down here. I'm guessing it's gonna be that one. That is not what I want to see. All right, so now that's syncing up. But it's still, it's still, it's a little bit off, isn't it? Not, not a lot, but just a little bit. All right. So what I'll need to do is go in really, really closely. And what I can do is I can then nudge that around. So it totally syncs up. So what I can do, let me see if I can find one of their chunks that, that syncs up. Okay. So right here, what I can do is I, I want these two waveforms or these are called transients. I want these to kind of line up. So let me try that. See how that sounds. So that's a, that's a little better, you know. I could sit here and I could keep, um, I could keep, uh, you know, messing around with and, and dropping everything in. Um, what I would have done differently in hindsight is what my guitar player and my bass and my drummer did right there is giving me basically some sort of click, some sort of time um, that I could then line up with the vocalist um, with Perrin. I just had to kind of figure out three, four. Looking back on when I. So I had to find out where that downbeat was, know that that's the beginning of the first verse, and then pull that, that waveform over there. Uh, what key am I using to press? I'm actually just um, drag, I'm, I'm clicking on it, and then holding down my mouse, and just go, going back and forth just like that. So one of the cool things about any of these DAWs is a lot of the hotkeys, um, meaning uh, uh, control V, control C, Control T for tab or cut or paste. Any of those also work in this. So if you're used to, to using Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, they all work in this as well. All right. So those are, you know, a few things that we can definitely, um, you know, cover and really get into uh, next week. Let me see if I can get my, um, let me see if I can get my, my, my slide back on. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. Um, so, like I said, what we'll do on Friday is we'll kind of dig into how did I go take how did I go about taking all these different um, these different uh, these different files and layering them in. And I kind of mentioned and went sideways for a moment. 
Um, one thing I would do is in addition to my drummer, my guitar player giving me clicks that I can line up. Another thing you can do is maybe when the, because this song starts with the bass. It starts off big. So no one really comes in. So I could have asked everyone to listen to the first bar and gone and have them all clap or snap the downbeat of bar two. And then I, once again, I could have taken all those and just lined them right up and then I'm good to go. What I eventually had to do on this was I found the beginning of the bridge and I, I lined them all up there. So in hindsight, there's certainly some things that I would have done differently. Something else you can do is if you want to create a, a if you want to create your guide track, what you can do is you can drop that into a DAW and you can add um, two bars for nothing. So you can add a one, two, three, bunga dum bon dun dum, and then you can just line it up right there. Yeah, thank you, Daphne. Yes, uh, Soundtrap is is a universal program, free. Um, you can go online. They actually just extended their their free trial offer, I believe, up to ninety days. Um, so you can use it, and um, yeah, it's it's a it, it's a, a great thing. So once again, going back to some of the additional benefits of the recording, uh, the visual cues, being able to look at those transients and. You can tell a student, hey, you're playing way on top of the beat. You're really, really rushing. And they, no, I'm not. I think I sound fine. Until you show them and they can see it. And maybe through seeing it, they can also hear it. Go, oh, okay. I, I see what you're saying now. And what you're doing there is you're developing those critical listening skills um, that will help them in your band right now and also beyond their time with you. And that's really what we want to think about is how can we develop these skills uh, beyond uh, our students' time with us. Um, it teaches students how to play, especially we're talking about jazz tunes and pop, popular tunes, teaches them how to play for the song. Overplaying is not tolerated in the pro professional world. And it, you know, um, so it teaches them to really kind of think about themselves and how can they add just enough to the musical conversation. And uh, it fosters creativity. You know, Jamie, the guitar player, wasn't playing exactly the line that was on the studio recording um, because he's using all these influences from Prince to Slime the Family Stone to Stevie uh, to Stevie Ray Vaughan um, to Jimi Hendrix to create his own part, but it's still very reminiscent of what's going on. Um, and then finally, it's just the student experience. It's so, so crazy. Hey, Debbie, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hope to see you on Friday. Um, the student experience that, that they get from this. Um, if you look at this picture down here, this is actually um, was us recording at a professional studio. This is actually Royal Studios in Memphis. This is Al Green Studio. And we were able to use a lot of the gear that um, Al's band was able to use. So it's giving the kids that experience of being in the studio, uh, which frankly helped me to be uh, a, a much better player and also a much better teacher. And the idea is to give that experience to the students as well. So that's that's kind of the idea. Like I said, we'll on Friday, we'll cover more of the how do we go about doing this? Um, but what, what are what are some what are some questions? What are some thoughts? Is is this even helpful? What are some thoughts from you all? Put those in the in the in, in the chat if you have them. Um, Paul, the students playing from from written music. No, they're not. Um, not with not with this group anyway. Um, with this group, I think the drummer said. I think he offered, "Hey, if anyone wants charts, let me know." Um, but no one. I, I didn't send them any charts, and they didn't play off charts because this is just one of those those stock tunes that um, one of the stock tunes that any of the students that went through my program they they they, they just know. That's one of the tunes we did every year. So no, they were not doing that. That said. You certainly could use some online collaborative programs like Flat.io, which is an online notation program um, if you wanted to transcribe or if you wanted to um, create those charts. You certainly could do that as well. Megan, the largest group I've tried this with. Um, right now, if you – let me kind of – actually, I'm not going to share the screen again. But in in my – on my screen, what I have, um, I actually have uh, – files right now from three other schools. One is a 15 person acapella group. 
Um, one is a about a seven person rock band doing a no doubt tune. And I'm actually waiting to hear from another friend of mine who is a choir director in Chicago. And then another friend of mine in Memphis is going to send some stuff as well. So I think, you know, each time you add an additional layer or an additional person, um, it's going to take that much more time to drop it in. But much like with anything, as you kind of figure things out, you figure out how to do it more efficiently. It, it becomes more easy and you can really drop you can really drop those in pretty quickly. So um, how many tracks, traps, tracks can Soundtrap work with? That's a great question that I have no earthly idea. Like I said, if I if I were a soundtrack kind of guy, I might know that question. Um, I'm sure if you just Googled it, it would let you know. Um, one thing you can do is let's say, let's say Soundtrap only does 10 tracks and you have 20 kids. Well, how do you do that? What you can do is you can do a technique that's called bouncing down. Basically what you can do is you can take two tracks and you can bounce those down into one track. So that's how it used to be done back in the, the 60s at Stax and Motown is most all those songs um, from early Motown or early Stax, it was all on a four track recorder. But if you think about it, there are, you know, the four tops, the Supremes, there's three guitar players, there's a bass player, there's a keyboard player, there's a drummer. How do they do all that? Um, sometimes they would just use, use room mics, but often what they would do is they would take those multiple tracks and they would, they would bounce them down to a single track. So you can get as many tracks as you want there. Um, so that's how how I would how I would do it. How would you handle multiple players on the same part? I mean, here's here would be an option is if you have multiple how many bands within your band do you have? Let's say if you have 100 kids in your band and theoretically um all of them are on you have at least two people on a part. So theoretically you have two self-contained bands within your larger ensemble. So you could conceivably um, just track each of those smaller bands. And depending on how they line up, you could you could put them together. Um, so that's that that's certainly one one way one way of doing it. Um, I think you could handle multiple players. Um, but much like in, in jazz, you typically want one person per player because then you start dealing with intonation issues and once again you you you, you could use autotune. You didn't hear that here. I'll just put that out there. Um, yeah, Mike, play saxophone and record myself, record it yourself. There's a lot of people doing that. Um, Harry Waters, phenomenal trombone player and a uh, good buddy of mine, all around great guy. Harry does these all the time using the acapella app where he has quartets, quintets, octets, tintets, and they're all him playing whatever tune it is. And they're super cool. You can absolutely do this as an individual, uh, no doubt. Um, Michelle, what suggestions do you have to use this for just doing standard band or orchestra lit? I think it goes back to what um, to the question that Megan had in terms of in terms of multiple players. Um, how do you go about handling multiple players on the individual parts? So could you break the orchestra down into smaller groups? Could you break your strings down into uh, quartets or quintets? Say first, second violin, viola, cello, bass. Could, could you possibly do that on some of the pieces? That might not work for everything, but kind of once again, think, out of, think outside the box about what might be possible given the ensemble, given the ensemble uh, you have. So um, have you heard, Paul, have you heard jazz band kids playing along to a fully scored jazz ensemble chart while listening to the recording of it? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I think, well, just, just like what these students were doing here is they were listening to a full Stevie Wonder band while playing along to it. So I think, um, you know, if you think about a big band, um, you know, 19, 18, 19, 20, 20 students, I think you could do the exact same thing. I think, and I think, um, yeah, I think you could totally do that. Um, and, and I think kind of coming at it from the same approach um, would, would really be, would, re would really be a, a way of doing that. And we can certainly talk more about this. Um, oh, this is great to see you all answer some of your questions. That bounce it down. Yeah, Jeff, spot on. Once you, so uh, some folks are talking about bouncing down tracks and what do you do with, with multiple instruments. Uh, once you get the trumpet section recorded, you can bounce that all down to one stereo track. Stereo meaning left and right. So that's something you, you, you could do. Um, 
Larry, have you ever used smart music? Could you import these audio files and do this? I personally have never used smart music. Um, uh, so I, I don't know that it could, I, I don't know whether or not it can be done. You can certainly reach out to uh, uh, John Milnazak or uh, Jim Frankel or those folks who, who have much more experience than I do. Um, I kind of laughed and actually had a good friend of mine give me grief um, via text when uh, when Elisa put um, technology guru for me because uh, I'm I don't consider myself that 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 in any way shape or form. So yeah, I, I don't know that answer, but um, those would be the first two folks that I would think about in terms of reaching out um, to do that. I don't see why you couldn't use smart music, especially in terms of disseminating the the sheet music and then getting the audio files back and then drop it in. I, I don't see why you couldn't. The only issue there really is it once again is going to be time. Um, so the students could use smart music or some sort of program like that. And they're listening to a guide track for once again, intonation, time, um, feel. Then I think it's totally doable. Um, but once again, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I can't absolutely speak to that. So we probably just have a couple more minutes. Um, you know, if you have any more questions, I'm, I'm happy to hang on and see what's going on. Um, so one thing I did want to mention is, um, uh, actually, no, I did want to mention that. It's not a big deal. Uh, but, um, but truly, you know, there's lots of folks who are, who are coming, who are doing great things. There's some people who are, who are, um, they're, they're really MacGyvering this for those of you who are children of the eighties, this guy, um, you can certainly take a look at that and, you know, we're figuring out what we can do with whatever we have on hand. And that's really what it comes down to. So tell you what, Larry, um, bouncing down tracks. Um, let's, let's talk about that on Friday. Uh, I, I will, because one, I know how to do it in Pro Tools. I don't know how to do it on Soundtrap. I will figure it out just for you by Friday. Um, I'll probably do it as soon as we get off here. Um, but truly, you know, come with more of your questions. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we'll do this again on Friday at, at two o'clock and we'll do it for once again, about 45 to 60 minutes again, and just kind of dig into this and see what are some other options and um, how can we move this on from here and how can we um, help our students and really kind of, once again, um, help our students and also uh, maybe also we can learn a few skills along the way as well, which will then help our students. So um, Jody, yes, I think in the thank you page, once I sign off, um, there will be a, um, a, a, a registration button that you can do uh, that you can click on. And then what will also be on the music ed Facebook page, I'll tweet it out. So it will, it will hopefully be out there. So, um, absolutely Michelle, I'm, I'm happy to help out. Um, Hey Bob, thanks for, thanks for sticking around, man. Good. We have to, we have to touch base sooner rather than later. Uh, but once you, once, once again, all thank you so very much. Um, I hope to see several of you all, uh, this coming, uh, this coming Friday and, uh, we'll just, we'll keep MacGyvering this. We'll keep figuring it out and go from there. All right. I appreciate you all. Hey, you all take care. Enjoy.